It's Monday again, so that means I'm all up in your business with a video here. Um, I'm about to go for a jog, so I wanted to get this out to you first so I don't have any excuses or forget or anything like that. I'm still struggling to find a good setup for this, so bear with me as I move you around my house in different uh, lighting situations as I try to figure this out. I think this week I'm going to take some time and just set up my little recording studio or whatever. So today I want to talk about why we don't share the big exciting stuff that's going on in our lives or the things that, that are just awesome or that make us come alive or the ideas we have. And one of the things I think is going on is that we are afraid that we're going to look stupid if it doesn't work out. So I struggled with this when I was starting Party Wolf and um, I'm it, even just not, I don't want to say little things, but things that you wouldn't be, think you should worry about too much. Like uh, I have an art show coming up, for instance, and uh, I'm going to be vending at the Jackalope Art Fair. And, and those things like, you know, people like them, um, they're they're well attended typically, but I think there's just this idea of like, hey, come look at this thing I'm doing, even though I might really suck at it. So the other thing, I think we are afraid of seeming like we think we're better than someone. Um, it seems like people, when you talk to them, they just want to, they want to talk about what's going wrong a lot. Like we definitely do that thing in our culture where we're like, everything's fine, even though it's not. But once you know people, you kind of get together to just talk about like, uh, how stressful work is or how much I hate Mondays or how much homework I have or whatever. And you don't want to be that person that's like, oh, everything's really awesome for me, actually. <laughs> uh, but I think that we should be that person more often. Um, I think we are worried along that same vein that we're afraid if someone's having a bad time that we're doing them a disservice if we're like, oh, I'm sorry to hear that, but my life's rocking it out. <laughs> we don't want to be a jerk, so we kind of like dim that part of us so we can like stay at their same energy, but maybe it would uplift them if we could be like, hey, I feel for you. It doesn't mean you don't feel for them, but you don't have to get down in that hole with them. Um, and I think that it can be good to have someone around you where things are going really well so that they can kind of, I don't know, ask you how you do it or, or feel hopeful that they're going to get back to that space again someday. I don't think that we really help each other by uh, dimming ourselves so that we can be like on the same negative energy as someone else. This doesn't mean you don't have compassion for people. It doesn't mean you're not there for your friends, but you don't have to downplay the good in your life because of that. Um, I also think sometimes we are doing stuff or attempting to do stuff that goes against what we're taught is even possible or normal. And so we feel like we have to downplay that so that we're not freaking anybody out. Um, I haven't had a job in months because I just have been able to uh, keep this money going that I got when I had a workman's comp injury and some savings that I had. And it's weird to talk about that. And it's awesome. Like, it's my dream. I am going to this amazing college and I really wanted to be able to go full time. And I've been able to do it for this whole semester. And but I downplay it. I'm like, yeah, I know I should probably get a job or whatever. Instead of feeling like how I really feel, which is like, yeah, I'm really fortunate and blessed and this kicks so much ass and I'm really grateful. Um, the other thing I think we sometimes have told stuff to the wrong people and they dragged us down with their worry or fear or anger instead of supporting us. And so we felt like, well, I better not try that again because it wasn't safe or it didn't feel good. So this is why I think that we should share. I think the world needs more examples that an awesome, fun, and exciting life is possible. We need more people that are just out there like, yeah, I love, I love the world. I love what's happening. I love that there's a squirrel that comes on my porch and eats things out of my hands. I love that I woke up in a bed in an apartment that I love with clean water and plumbing and coffee to drink and food to eat. I can go in the kitchen and just make any one of a bunch of meals. Like, I don't think we should just run around acting like idiots and like screaming super Pollyanna-like, but I mean, I think more of us could be more appreciative about how awesome life really is. Um, and then if you're constantly downplaying your awesomeness to fit in with some kind of preconceived notion as to how the world should work, you're only contributing to that idea and you're only keeping that shit alive. And you're not helping people realize that there is a different way that exists. And I think more people would step out into living a more exciting and dreamy life if they saw that it was possible. Instead, I think the people that are doing it are kind of keeping it under wraps. And so it's still this secret, like, how does anyone do it kind of thing? Or, or we feel like it's only for a special few. 
Um, and then if you find the right people to share this kind of stuff with, it's really good and helpful to have that cheering section. You need to find people that are also going after their most badass version of their life. And, but you should be discerning. So if you have a sister, for instance, who thinks that starting a, ridic a business is ridiculous and foolish, then you don't want to talk to her about that. Just leave her out of that piece of your life. Um, if you don't have anyone around you that's doing that, go to meetups, um, go to seminars. There's your local like small business bureau often has workshops and classes and things where you can go meet people that are doing exciting things with their lives too. And as far as looking stupid, like if you're giving it everything you've got and it still doesn't work out, it's still a worthy endeavor and you're still learning from it and you're still um, teaching other people like how to be brave and how to go after stuff. No one wants to hear about the person who just had everything magically, perfectly work out for them. We like to hear about people who failed and got up and failed and got up again and, and they're making it work that way. Those are the people that inspire us and so don't worry about looking stupid. Maybe you want to be aware if you're someone who is always talking a big game about all the things you're going to do, but you just sit and watch another um, Netflix marathon. If you're not actually out there going for it, then that's different. You don't want to just sit there talking about it. And having said all this, though, I will say there's this cool practice I've been trying, uh, and I've heard it in a couple places, about uh, keeping stuff to yourself more. Because often, even when we have the right people around us, they don't respond in the way that we hoped they would, or they're not quite sharing our enthusiasm for it, and it can kind of diffuse our power and our excitement, especially if it's like a new idea we have. And so there's something really cool about holding your new idea or endeavor like a precious little treasure and uh, celebrating on your own. So, you know, give yourself high fives, run around, do high kicks, jump around, dance around, go in the mirror and be like, oh, you're so brilliant. I'm so excited about your ideas. But then just like you, you're the one that celebrates it until it's actually out in the world. And then you tell people, hey, look at this awesome thing I did. I think that's really powerful and it can be a good practice. Um, I have notes for this one, sorry. <laughs> There's a lot I wanted to say, so I didn't want to memorize it all. <laughs> so if you go back and watch the beginning of this, the, the whole reason I'm doing this, it's because I wanted to do something uh, so people had someone to look to who was in the process of doing this thing, which is starting a business and trying to be self-employed and, and uh, create this dreamy, badass life. Um, building themselves from the ground up rather than someone who is just telling you how to do it from having already achieved like the golden castle or whatever. I think that that's cool to have people that did it that are like, come on, you can do it too. But I just wanted to try this experiment of being like, hey, you're right there with me. I don't know how this is going to work out, but I'm doing it and I'm sharing uh, with you everything that's going on while I'm doing it. Um, and so part of that is sharing the struggle of how I want to share the struggle I'm having of how to create an audience. Um, a lot of times I will write these blog posts that maybe only two people read in a day, or maybe um, the videos are getting one or two or ten views or whatever. Um, and I want to reach a lot more people with this stuff, and it's not because I just want to like feed my ego and have a bunch of likes and follows and stuff. It's because I really feel like I have something to say, I have something to share, and this is the shit that if it had been available when I was thinking about getting sober or when I was feeling scared or unsure of myself or struggling with like super low self-esteem and shit, I would have eaten this kind of stuff up. So I'm putting it out there and I just want to share about um, what that's like when you feel kind of foolish for doing stuff that you feel like hardly anybody is watching or listening to or caring about. And you start to feel like maybe this is this was dumb of me. Uh, like, for instance, I gave a talk, I was invited to give a speech, and I worked really hard on it, and I had an hour, and so it was just this really long talk that I was really proud of, and uh, there were two people there, and then someone came in halfway through, and it wasn't, that wasn't my fault, um, it wasn't like I was in charge of, excuse me, <laughs> getting people, to, getting butts in the seats or whatever, uh, but it felt stupid, and I got there, and I was kind of like, oh, I practiced, and I was nervous for this, and and then I decided, no, you know what? Like, there's two people here that are willing to hear this talk, and I'm going to give it to them, and I'm going to get their feedback on it. So it, I took it as an opportunity, and I think that's really important. And I think that there, uh, so there's a time, too, when it just, 
You just have to understand that it takes time for people to find out who you are, what you're making, and why it matters. And the best advice I can give around this is to show up each time as if you already had like millions of followers, millions of people who are checking in and counting on you to deliver this content. Um, you should totally be consistent. And I've struggled with this one. And it can be really easy to be like, oh, no one cares. I don't care. But it does matter. And and even if only one person is looking at this, they matter. And you matter. Whoever's watching this, I'm doing this for you. Thank you. Um, so, yeah. So show up as your best self. I like to do a game, too, where I'm, I pretend that, like, I'm getting paid $10,000 to do this thing. And I do this all over my house, too. Like, what if I was getting paid $5,000 to wash these dishes? And my attitude gets better, and I just do it a little bit better. So that can be a cool practice, too. Um, the other thing to consider, too, and I don't think this is super smarmy or anything, but the one person who reads your article could be someone that could introduce you to someone who has a wider audience or could who could connect you to people that can help you uh, spread your message. So it's just a good practice in business and in life to treat whoever you're with um, as if they were the most important person in the whole world. And that's what I'm working on. So Truly, thank you for watching this. Thank you for giving a hoot about what I'm saying, and I really hope it helps. I promise I'm not doing this to hear myself talk. <laughs> In fact, it's been a little nerve-wracking <laughs> to do this every week. So um, get out there, kick some ass, and then go talk about it. Tell people what you're up to, unless you want to practice that thing where you kind of keep it like a special secret. But then tell us when you're done and when you've made it. All right, have a great week. I will talk to you next Monday. Bye.